Roman Gabriel Show. Listen to the Roman Gabriel Show Gabriel. Show at RomanGabrielShow.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. Roman Gabriel Show. Welcome to the Roman Gabriel Show, RomanGabrielShow.com. On streaming television at dbnatelevision.tv and, of course, everywhere you get your podcasts, social networking, YouTube, and on Facebook. We're at Super Bowl 56, coming to you from Corona Del Mar properties right here in the middle of paradise, Corona Del Mar, California. Next to me is a USC legend, Cleveland Browns NFL, and uh, he's got a great book that he's getting ready to come up with here soon. We were talking before the show. Paul McDonald with us, Trojan. How are you doing? Roman, thanks for having me on your show. And Deb, great to be next to you. And uh, what an exciting week, as you pointed out. Uh, You know, uh, lots going on. I know your plate is full. And it's so great to be on your show just to share the excitement of the week and everything that you're doing. Okay, so Paul, I'm going to be selfish here because growing up in Southern California like I did, I was a big Trojans fan. You loved USC, loved USC football, man. Loved to watch you play. And uh, what's it like? What's it like to have played at USC, played in the NFL, and be right here living where you where you made your name? Well, I was privileged, you know, to have the opportunity to play at USC. I uh, was always an overachiever in life. Um, I came in as the uh, ninth on the depth chart at USC, right? I was one of nine quarterbacks. Uh, and so I was just blessed to be there. I was just like, God, I'm, I'm actually here. I'm really excited to be here and put the Cardinal gold on and get to run out of the tunnel at the Coliseum. And, you know, I worked hard. I had a coach that believed in me. I had an opportunity I, and, uh, and I performed and was surrounded by such great athletes. Like, uh, and I played football in college, actually. Where? At Harvard. You're kidding. Yes. What position? I was safety. I tried to stop the passes you guys were throwing. <laughs> and the good the good news is the scholarships uh, were, were you got to get academically right before you walk in there, right? That's, That's right. a different, totally different environment for football, yeah, right? They, in fact, the teams are pretty good now. and They're much better now than they were when I was playing. The NFL was doing a couple years ago because, you know, called Together We Make Football. And I was criticized I'm a doctor about letting my son play sports, play, playing football in particular. And I said, you know, if I could take my son antiquing and get him to appreciate the life i do it but i can't he's not going to he wants to hit things and mm-hmm. catch things and run into things so i let him play football believing that if i took away from him something that i had at, at that age right. you know i'd never be able to make it up to him and i think it's benefited him i realized the risks but i appreciate the benefits as well and football taught me a lot about life it taught me a lot about my body part of the reason i went into medicine was because i got curious about the temple of the soul really and a lot of physicians are actually athletes who- and it really showed my, my first event when I swam the preliminaries for the uh, relay. Um, boy, I bombed. I, I, I was so nervous and um, I just didn't know how to deal with the pressure and stuff. And so um, I was lucky to have someone who was my idol sort of take me under their wing that day uh, and just distract me and get my mind off of what happened. So I'd be able to swim at night and swim faster. And I was very um, appreciative of that, but, but it definitely was a lot different you know, doing it as a 17-year-old than as a 41-year-old mom. All players of all time. Great to have Eric Dickerson with us on the Roman Gabriel Show. Eric, how are you, buddy? Good. How you doing, Roman? Thank you for having me. So do you think that that time at SMU kind of set the stage for you before you went to the NFL about trusting the media, correct? That's perfect. That's that's it. Yeah, that, set, that set the stage. I never trusted the media at that point. And, you know, they made me out to be this bad guy. I mean, Malcolm Ted, uh, I forgot some other name that kind of I never heard of. Um, and like I say, it really disturbed my mother because she said, I know how you, you're not that guy. You're not that person because all I wanted was to get paid right. And I wasn't like trying to make a big deal of it. I just said, I want to be paid right. I mean, I'm not getting paid right. I mean, I'll give you an example, a good example. John Elway was the first pick in the draft. I was the second pick. John Elway got a million dollar signing bonus. And I think he was making, I don't know, base salary, almost a million a year. I got a $600,000 signing bonus that was a loan. Now I say it was going to be a loan. I had to pay it back. And then my salary, was, my base salary was one fifty. dollars So how is that? That's not even fair. I mean, and, and make a long story, I had to end up paying my signing bonus back. Um, well, how does it feel for you to, to have been a foundational figure for young women in this business? Uh, thanks for asking that, Roman. I finally embrace it. I didn't want to wear it for a long time, but... Um, Michelle Tafoya just said to me the, uh, the other day, she said, you took all the firsts. 
<laughs> and it was true, you know, first woman to cover the NFL as a beat, first woman on many, many, you know, NBA broadcasts, World Series broadcasts. Uh, so I covered 35 Final Fours. So I, for a long time, I just really said, well, I just love sports the way other kids love music, you know, or poetry or the law. I just love sports.